you know, when my, my parents passed away, people asked me, so, well, who's going to do the funeral? I said, I am. When Barb's dad passed away, I said, I, I want to be part of this funeral. I know him. I knew my parents. When Pastor Chris's mom passed away, I, I'm glad they asked me to do the funeral. I knew the woman. I wanted to be able to speak on their behalf. I wanted to be able to tell the story, tell about how they loved Jesus and how God was in their heart and in their life and all that. So I wanted to be able to do that. Nobody knew them better than me. Was it hard? Yeah, at times it was, but at other times it was like I was glad I had the opportunity. I think I got more emotional over Sister Bricky dying than I did about my parents. And I love my parents, please don't get me wrong, but when Sister Bricky died, she was my confidant. She was a lady I went and talked to when I wasn't talking to anybody else. And I'd tell her my whole story. It's like she'd just look at me and pray for me and put her arms around me and give me a big hug. When she passed away, I was gonna I did her funeral. When I come out that door there, I started to really collapse. I was like I started bawling, I couldn't stop crying. I was like, I looked at Pastor Lockner that was here to help, and I said, I don't know if I can do this or not. But you know what? The farther I got up this aisle, the more of the grace of God that came upon me, and the more of the power of the Holy Spirit that I felt, and when I got up here, I felt as bold as a lion. I felt like I can do this. Amen. See, God always helps you if you're willing to get out there and do something. These guys knew the story, but they didn't know the man. I'm so glad that I know the man. Amen. Can you say that with me? I'm glad I know him. Amen. I don't just know about him. I know him. When him and I talk and we have conversation, there is a reciprocal thing that goes on. I speak to him and he speaks back to me. I talk to him. He talks back to me. And you know what? People may be watching my face and say, you're crazy. God don't talk to nobody. Well, maybe he don't talk to you, but he's talking to me. Yeah. And I'm so glad he does. Aren't you, brother? When you get ready to preach, aren't you glad God says, I want you to go to such and such scripture, and I want you to share this this morning. You don't know all the stuff you're going to put on it. You don't know all the leaves that are going to go on that tree that you're going to try to present. But you, I promise you, when you get up here and start to do it, all of a sudden, bam, it just shows up. Amen. Amen. That's the only way to preach, I think. I mean, you can have notes. And you can put things down. You put scripture down that you feel like God gave you. But, man, don't add more than it's supposed to be added. And don't take nothing out that God put in. Just get up there and give him, give everybody what God gave you. If it's good, it's God. If it's not, it's probably me. In fact, I'll take, in fact, if it's bad, it is me. But if it's good, it's God. And then he said, Jesus begins to speak to them. They spoke to him, they told him the story, but then he speaks to them. And there's nothing better than when God begins to speak to you. When you hear his voice telling you what to do. You've ever had something you needed to have a decision on and all of a sudden God gave you the answer? Oh, and God will do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to go down this road or not. But God will even do that when you're working on your car. Or your truck or your lawnmower or whatever you might be having to deal with. I had times back when I used to work for the city, I had a problem with a vehicle that I had to work on. I was working on police cars and I was working on fire engines and I was working on garbage trucks and I mean I was working on everything. And there's some stuff coming and go, I don't know how to fix this. And I'd look at it and say, God, I need help with this one. And I guarantee you, every time he would give me the answer, either he would give me the answer in my spirit, or somebody would come along beside me and go, you need to do this. I was, oh yeah, right, I, I could do that. God will always send you help when you need help. Amen. If you'll ask him. Amen. Scripture said we don't have because we don't ask. Right. We think that's just about potato chips and cookies. You know, it's not just about getting food. It's about having a relationship with God that says he can help you in every area. Of your, can he help you with your job? Certainly he can. You can make, he can make you smarter than you think you are. That's right. Pastor Chris is always telling me, I don't know how I got this job. But God worked it out. And so now I understand some things. And now I'm learning some things. And now you know that possibly you're going to get to go to school and do some things. I mean, that's, that's all wonderful. Joe Gillum sitting back there, he, he went into that 
job. He didn't know anything, but he studied. He went and looked and done his part. It's kind of like if you say you know God, then you should know a little bit about him. If somebody starts asking you about Jesus, you should have read this enough where you know a little bit about him. Amen. Amen. Don't you think? Amen. I'm amazed how many people give their heart and life to Jesus and never read this book. Leonard Ravenhill said it years ago. He said, we've given ourselves to a book we don't read and to a God we don't know. <laughs> he, said, just, he just said it that way. He was that way. He was that plain. I remember he was talking to David Wilkerson one time. He said, most men only have one message. He said, he looked at me and he goes, you have two. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Chris and I and Lowell went to Romanian church one night with Brother Emmanuel. And, uh, you know, they did the singing and they do everything. I mean, they got the band, they got the choir, they got, the, I mean, they, they go through the big, I mean, if you went to a Romanian service, you're not going to get out of there for at least three hours. They did the whole thing and it was time for Brother Emmanuel to come preach. And Brother Emmanuel got up in front and he goes, hmm. He said, look at all this stone and all this uh, fancy stuff, he says. And your people in Romania are starving. And you're building big monstrosity buildings with all this fancy stuff. He goes, I think we need to go on our knees and repent. In fact, I'm going to get on my knees. And I think your pastor and all the people in this church, we need to get on our knees and repent. And that was the end of his message. He got on his knees and he started praying. And Pastor Chris and I were sitting there going... Well, who is this, John the Baptist? <coughs> he was very plain with them. Because, see, he'd been going behind the Iron Curtain for years, taking Bibles, taking clothes, taking everything he could to try to help the people that were starving, people that were in trouble, people that didn't have, never had a Bible. And I remember when we first went there, it was like, we couldn't believe it. We felt like we went back in time, back in time 100 years. This was like, what? Met people that had never owned a Bible that were in their 80s. In fact, one brother, I got a picture of him, and I think it's on the wall out there in the hall. I'm giving him a Bible. He's in his 80s. And when I'm giving him this Bible, big old tears are dripping off his chin. And he's speaking. He goes, I never had that before. It was like, what? What have I been doing? I've been sitting in church. I've been praising, you know, singing and doing my little thing, you know, cheerleading for Jesus. And, and uh, going and, and here are these people over here. They ain't never had a Bible. And I got 10 or 12 at the house. My heart was broken. <coughs> Our hearts don't break for the lost anymore. We don't see people as lost. We just see them as people. But there's a whole world out there that's lost and needs Christ in their heart and in their life. And if I don't know him, I can't present him to them. Amen. Amen. He speaks to him. He said, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. In other words, you've had it forever. I gave you all the words. I gave you what the prophets had spoken. They told you all that was going to happen. He says, and still, you don't believe it. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I'd love to have been able to be a part of that conversation. Because, I mean, I'm thinking, wait a minute. He starts at Moses and he starts telling them about all the things concerning him. Now, what that tells me is that he started in Genesis. And he started, he just went through the whole spiel, and he started telling them, and every scripture that was concerning himself, he began to say, now this was me, and now that was me, and now that was That's why you cannot throw away the Old Testament. There are pictures, there are little snapshots of Jesus all through the Old Testament scriptures. He's all over the whole Bible. In fact, without Jesus, there wouldn't be no Bible. He's in all of it. He's, he's in the types. He's in the shadows. And he begins to tell them, and he said, and they, as they drew nigh and to the village, whether they went, he made as though he would have gone further 
would, uh, would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. If you ask Jesus to stay, he'll stay. But if you don't want him to stay, he won't. He moves on. He won't forsake you. He won't give up on you. But you won't have an intimate relationship with him either. If you want him to stay, he'll stay. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. I can't key on it enough. If you eat this, you'll see him. Amen. If you don't eat it, you won't see him. He's in it. He's in every portion of it. This is not a book to just sit on your table. This is book. This is the book of life. This is life. And blessed are those who find it. Blessed are those who discover it. Blessed are those who are hungry for it. If we're not hungry and thirsty for it, you won't have it. You say, well, brother, I don't have time to sit around and read my Bible all the time. I know that. You know, I'm not dumb. I understand that totally completely. But at least you got to be able to give something to it sometime. Yeah. I remember Tim Belita said, man, if you can't read for an hour, read for 10 minutes. If you can't read for 10 minutes, then read for a minute and a half. He said, but still do something. Yeah. Start. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be glorious if we could discover as much about him as he knows about us? Yeah. Amen. Wow. And you say, well, is that possible? Well, yeah, it's there. You just got to want it. There's some people that know him so intimately that when you talk to them, all you feel is the Holy Ghost. Just the thrill of them being with him. I remember I was talking to a couple of preachers one time, and I'd been reading my Bible, and you know, and I was really, you know, into it and stuff like that. And so I started talking to him. And when I was talking to him, I was just bringing up all these scriptures of this I read, the story I read here. I was blessed by this and I was blessed by that. And they looked at me and they go, is that all you want to talk about? It shocked me. These guys had been ministering for years. And I was like, you know, just a young preacher kid, you know, just trying to do what I could. Is that all you want to talk about? And, and, and my response just came out before I even thought. I said, well, yeah. It's really all I want to talk about. I don't, can you find a better subject? Do you know something better to talk about than Jesus? Can you find something that will thrill you more than he can? I mean, you can go ride one of them crazy rides at Cedar Point. It'll throw you for a second. Or make you throw up one. <laughs> Jesus will throw you and throw you and throw you. And never make you sick. I ain't never heard anybody say, I got sick eating on Jesus. <laughs> no, when I eat on Jesus, I get well. Hallelujah. I get better. I begin to experience things that I can't experience otherwise. And I don't know. I don't know how to end this. I, I just feel like in my heart I'm thinking, I, I want to know God better. I need to know Him better. Not only for my sake, but for your sake. The better I know Him, the more I can give Him to you. You know, and then the more that you know him, the more you can give back. See, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this give and take thing. You're supposed to give and I'm supposed to give. It's not supposed to be me giving. It's not all about that. That's why you're out there and I'm up here. We're facing one another. We're not, we, what we're doing is we're in the middle of, between the cherubim are in between us. And they're crying out to God. And so as we are talking back and forth to one another, he's in our midst. Nothing better than that. Even driving down the road, you can have him. My wife and I, we took a little quick trip last Saturday. We took a trip, went seeing my brother, seen the colors. And I looked there and said, man, God's a good painter. I mean, the sky. <laughs> and it's a good thing we went last week. It was like 78 degrees up north. It hasn't been that since. 
but it was a beautiful, beautiful time to spend with my brother. We didn't know it was his wife's birthday. We got up there, it was like, okay, happy birthday. Come on, we'll take you to dinner. And it was kind of shocking for me, because my brother goes, I said, is there any good restaurants around here? And he goes, oh, yeah, he said, we'll go to the Bear. I said, that sounds like a pretty good restaurant. You know, the Bear, got to be a good restaurant. God, hole in the wall. <laughs> Limited menu, it was like, I'm looking. And then the stuff that we wanted to eat, well, they only have that on Friday. <laughs> okay. I got off cheap. I mean, it didn't cost me much dinner, but it was like, when they said, we're going to the bear, I'm thinking, man, this is going to be great. Well, what it was, it was like a little restaurant next to a little, like, zoo type area where they got a real bear. <laughs> No, we ate dinner, went out seeing the bear. He could have cared less we were there. But it was good to spend time with my brother. You know, if you have an opportunity to spend time with the people you love, please do so. You don't ever know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to get that phone call. Spend time with them if you possibly can. I was I gotta tell you this story. I'm 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 gonna close, but I gotta tell you this story. My brother-in-law, Larry, his uh, his heart works about one third. You know, he just he doesn't get to do anything. He doesn't get to go anywhere. He sits in his chair a lot. Well, this year, for the first time in probably ten years, he went deer hunting, and he got a deer. And they sent me a picture of it. It was like. And I said to Rick, I says, I'm so thrilled that Larry was able to get out of the house and go and shoot a deer. And I mean, <laughs> it's funny when you look at the picture. He's got his cane and he's holding the deer. <laughs> but he's out there. And that may not do that for you, but it thrilled me that he could get out and go do something because we've been praying for him for a long time just that he would just be able to do something. Because that's not life. If you just sit and don't get to go anywhere or do anything, that's not life. Life is getting out and enjoying what God has blessed you to enjoy and how he's blessed you to have health to be able to go do it. Never be sad because you get to go and enjoy yourself. Just remember you're God's child in your enjoyment. Praise the Lord. Ah. <sighs> I love them. Do you love the Lord? I, I just, you know, I pray I've spoken into your heart today. It's like, God, help me to know you better because I know you know me. You count hair on my head. You know every little thing I think about. I mean, even when the disciples were sitting around, they were talking back and forth saying, you know, I wonder who's going to be the greatest among us. Maybe it'll be me and Peter, or maybe it'll be John, or maybe it'll be James. And he goes, Jesus perceiving their thoughts. He's not listening to them. He just perceives them. He says, what are you guys reasoning among yourselves who's to be the greatest? He said, the greatest among you shall be your servant. And they're always going, oh. <laughs> they, God understands and knows you. He sees what you think about. He watches where you go. He looks at your conversation. And he loves you anyway. That's the shocking part for me. Mm -hmm. Dallas Holm wrote a song years ago, he knew me then, he knows me now, and he loves me anyway. I'm thinking, wow. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your compassion. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Because I'm forgiven, I am commanded to forgive. So learn how to let things go. Learn how to forgive people. You know, if nothing else, you get yourself out of the cage. Because if you keep yourself in that cage of unforgiveness, you're the one that suffers the most. Get out of the cage. Say, you know what, I don't care what you've done. I've had people do things to me that it's like, if I told you about them, you'd go, wow. How can you forgive them? I said, I just do. Because I want to be free. I want to be out of the cage. I'm not going to live in that cage of unforgiveness. I'm not going to do it. Amen. And you're not going to do it either. Because I'm not going to let you. I mean, even under your breath right now, if you got somebody you got all, just under your breath say, I forgive them. Just say it. Come on. Just say it. I forgive them. I'm letting this go. I'm not going to let this control my life any longer. I'm going to be free to 
and walk in the ways of the Lord. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your word. It's true and it speaks volumes into our life. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that we would take the time, Father, to spend with you, whether it's in the morning, in the evening, in the middle of the day. But Lord, help us to have that time with you every day so that we might know you like you know us. Strengthen us in the areas of our life where we're weak. The things, Father, that plague us and pull us away from you. Father, I pray that you'd help us in those areas to be stronger. And dear Father, to be at our best in every area. I pray for those, Father, that watch us by Facebook. That in the name of Jesus, they have unforgiveness in their heart, Lord. If they have any bitterness or angers. That, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, they would let them go. And that, Father, there would be a freedom that would come to them. If they don't know you as Savior and Lord, may they look up and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me and come into my life. And may they pray that pray and believe it with all of their heart. And I ask you to do that for them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing this, all right? Lord, you are more precious than silver.
Jeremiah addressing the false prophets of his day, uh, God begins to speak and he said, if they had stood before me, in other words, if these prophets had stood before me and listened to me, and it's so important that when you get before God, you listen to him. He said, if they would have listened to me, they would have spoken my words and they would have turned my people from their evil ways and deeds. When God speaks to you, if you speak what he tells you to speak, it affects people's lives. It will change them. But if we're just speaking words out of our own head, it won't change anybody. So get before him. When he gives you something to say, say it. I would like to just say thank you to Joe, Chris, and everybody that's been helping with the messages from time to time. I didn't get to see Joe's yet, but I will. Um, but I appreciate the help we get here. All you that help us in any way, fashion, or form, whether it's cleaning the church or coming down here and making bulletins and getting music ready and uh, all that stuff's important. The church, church doesn't just happen by itself. You need to understand that. Some people think, you know, how do you do that? I, I, I tell people all the time, I got faithful people. They're, they're faithful. They may not be there every Sunday, but when they come, they're completely there doing what God would ask them to do. So thank you from the depths of my heart. Appreciate you and love you. Um, let's bow our heads. We're going to be dismissed. Brother Joe Gillum, dismiss us in prayer, please. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for the, the, the word that you give us and the, uh, the, the way it inspires us. Let us draw closer to you, Father God. Let us take this time to reflect upon our relationship with you and all the things that we put above it, Father God. Let us stop doing that so we can know you more intimately and know, know you better so we become more like Jesus. And Father God, I pray for the people who aren't here, all the people who are here, that you just bless them this week and until we get together again. And Father God, just a, a small reminder I just want to give to everybody out here. We do have a weekly Bible study at Wednesday at 6.30. If people want to come and participate, um, it would be a great thing. Uh, Pastor Ron has a, a lot of stuff for us. And uh, you bless him with all those words and you bless him with all the direction we go in. And Father God, I just want to ask you to, just to continue to bless him and, and give him the, the word and, and the vision that he needs for our house. Yes. And I come to you and I ask you these things, Father God, and I ask you, like I said, to bless every one of us through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.